Well, the race for Toronto Mayor is certainly heating up with the addition of three new candidates just this morning. Former Toronto Police Chief Mark Saunders formally announced his candidacy. City Councillor Josh Matlow also announcing his decision to run. We've spoken to both of them this morning here on Breakfast. And former Toronto Sun columnist Anthony Fury also putting his name in the ring. And Anthony Fury joins us now live in studio. So you're the third candidate here this morning. What was it about March 21st that got candidates saying, I want to join the race today? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That, that was quite something, you know, Nick. Thanks so much for having me here. I mean, I love Toronto. I'm passionate about this city. I'm the father of three small kids. I'm at the hockey rink, you know, half the time of, mm. of my life. So busy there with rink time. And, you know, it's been dismaying to hear so many people talk about how Toronto feels like it's a city in decline now. People talking about even moving out of the city because of law and order issues, affordability issues. Uh, seniors telling me that they don't like going downtown anymore. They used to go town, downtown for lunch to see a show. That's not happening anymore. And I want to be a part of the solution, Nick. And I feel like the status quo voices who got us to this place are not the people to get us out of it. I am going to bring a fresh perspective to City Hall. That's why I'm running. It seems to me sometimes that when I when I take a look at what's happening at City Council that there are a lot of ideas bandied about, but it, you talk about status quo in terms of where the solutions end up, but, the, but the, the, the city can't be fixed from Toronto. It almost feels like it needs to be fixed from above. Why is then the job of mayor so appealing and why do you think you can make changes at that level in that role? Because I want to provoke a conversation about who really runs this city. Because right now, on the one hand, you've got the sense that the lobbyists and the big corporations are calling the shots. On the other, you've got the fringe activists who they just send a couple dozen people to City Hall kicking and screaming. City Hall caves to them. Enough is enough. That stuff is over when I'm mayor. The people I'm going to put in charge are the hockey moms, the guy stuck on the 401 all day, and the small and medium businesses who've taken a beating the past couple of years. So let me ask you, we all know you as a, a Toronto Sun columnist. I've heard you on radio uh, you know, quite a bit throughout the years here. What's it like to sort of give up this side of the microphone and go to that side of the microphone? Because, you know, as a columnist, you can kind of sit on the sidelines and chirp and critique and sort of throw out your ideas here. Now you're the one whose ideas are going to be in the spotlight and, and are going to get the critiques. Yeah, you're right. Enough chirping from the sidelines. You know, <laughs> get into the race and be a part of the change. I see it as a natural progression because I've been a columnist broadcaster for over a decade. It's been a great privilege. And, you know, you connect with so many people. You meet top-notch experts who can help you uh, with these files. And you see with my advisory committee list, I've brought some of those people on board, experts in policing, experts in health issues, and, and so much more. And it also really comes down to the regular folks. It comes down to the connections that I've made over the past 10 years with getting the email from this small business owner, sitting down to meet with that community group over coffee, and, and, and connecting with people all across the city. That's been the great privilege, receiving the feedback from my columns, my commentary over the years. And, and it's really about uh, getting those people involved, getting them in the game and making Toronto about them, not about the special interests. I also understand uh, you, you kind of like hit, I didn't expect you to join the race. So I've kind of, you know, I know you by reputation, but I didn't know sort of about, about this, that you're sort of promising a bit of a review of what's going on downtown, a kind of a review, maybe a reorganization of priorities. Can you explain a bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Because I think there's a lot of odd pet projects going on at City Hall that really have nothing to do with serving the residents, the taxpayers, the things they expect, the things that they pay for. Because people say, uh, we want law and order, we want the streets to be cleaned up, we want the garbage collected on time. That's what City Hall should be about. But instead, we find these niche pet projects, uh, talking about renaming Dundas Street, whatever opinion you want to have on that question. This takes time, this takes money. I don't know if you saw, Nick, but they created this shrine to Eileen Davila's scarf at City Hall. It's a really weird thing. The Toronto Star was writing about Which it. scarf? There's so many. <laughs> uh, I think it was the first First one they were right. saying and it's like look I guess that's kind of cute but that is inappropriate that is not the good use of of money of staff resources those sort of things they have to go and any other thing that has to happen we need to find the efficiencies before we do what the other candidates are talking about they're talking about taking money from people's pockets when it comes to finding new what's the term revenue tools that mm -hmm. just means tax increases yeah. user fee increases more cost to put your kids in sports tolls on the gardener and DVP there's people who have floated that idea Enough of that. Enough of this talk of tearing down the gardener. Maybe in the 2030s when we have these other subway lines in place, I don't know, we can talk about uh, how to change our traffic patterns, but right now we're not actually providing the options for people to get around. And we got to expedite those, those transit programs for sure. Absolutely. But when you look at the size of the city's budget, if you try to start whittling down, you're going to have, you know, to your point, a lot of people coming down to City Hall saying, well, you're cutting this program, you're cutting that program, you're cutting that program. People have gotten used to sort of certain programs, certain levels of spending and, and opportunities available from the city. How do you pair that kind of stuff back when there's an expectation from so many taxpayers that this will be something the city provides? I, I think most people have the expectation that the core services will be there. So are we going to reduce police officers, defund the police like so many of the other guys have talked about? 
absolutely not. We're going to need to invest in that a little bit more. When it comes to you know garbage collection, are we, are we taking people out of that headcount? Absolutely not. But when it comes to those pet projects, and I'm going to be doing a lot of big announcements in the weeks ahead, identifying where those problem points are, I think regular folks, moderate Torontonians out there, they're going to agree, yeah, that stuff has got to go. And that's where we can find the efficiencies. Okay, that is the latest mayoral candidate joining us here on CB20 for breakfast, Anthony Fury. You recognize him from his columns in the Toronto Sun. He's now, of course, running for mayor. Good to chat with you, Anthony. Thanks so much. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate the time.